All right, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome. This is the ESL Open Cup Korea number 116. Bottom right hand corner, we of course have, I think, considered by many the best Protoss in the world at the moment Dragon Phoenix Gaming's hero. I mean, I, I would even say the best Protoss in, at, in the world at the moment. And in the top left, we have Michael Jackson himself from Shopify Rebellion. It is Beyond. So, TVP. What, what a matchup for both these players. <laughs> um, this is like I don't, I don't even know where to start. I'm gonna be honest. I don't even know where to start when we're talking about. Beyond and Hero TVP. Um, I think the first the first place to probably start is the most recent examples that we've had, um, which of course I think would have to be um, Hero versus Maru. We got it two times in a row. Uh, we got it at GSL, and then we also got it at DreamHack Valencia. And both times it was an absolutely incredible series. And Hero, I think, really showed that his his TVP is up to the level of Maru. I think Maru, I think some people were actually somewhat surprised that Maru ended up winning the, uh, that, the first series, at least, that they played in GSL, looking at the level of play. Um, and then coming, of course, into DreamHack, maybe a little bit more expected, but even then, a crazy result. And of course, Hero, has kind of been peaking. His, his only recent losses, in fact, are usually to players like Maru. Um, I think, what was the last? I think the last, that was the last loss that he had. Other than that, he's been pretty dominant in almost all matchups. Um, Hero has been the front runner for Protoss on the new patch when it comes to how they want to play the game, how you want to approach the game, and what tools you want to employ to really find victory and it's been incredible to see how he has been shaping the meta with with his playstyle. I mean right now I think he's yeah probably best Protoss in the world. Um, I think right now at League Lack ranks him at number three in Korea. Of course I believe that is behind Maru and I think the second one would be Rogue are the top two. Those are the only two people higher than him, though. That's it. Hero is rate, rating wise the third best. Is this Reaper is going to find its way in here for Beyond? Uh, it's not going to say anything crazy. We did have a starry opening for Hero, but now let's talk about Beyond because there is certainly a lot to talk about when it comes to Micro Jackson. When it comes to, I think you know the player that really showed how much you can do with Terran units first. I mean, Beyond was he's the reason that <laughs> the Reapers got nerfed. Oh my god, if we, if we remember back to the days of um, when Reapers could blow up buildings like it was nothing. Insane, insane times. But um, Beyond recently, I think, has been having on and off results. Um, it's sometimes Beyond looks really amazing. Sometimes Beyond is looking eh, not the best. It looks like he could be, he could do better. Um... Uh, but he's been showing some really good games overall. And one thing about Beyond is that he always um, plays really high-level TVP. And, you know, even when Beyond's other matches are, are lacking, I mean, I'm thinking back to when Beyond's TVT alone kept him out of, I think it was two consecutive GSLs because he couldn't qualify past Bunny. Uh, I think it was Bunny and then finally qualified to face Percival on TVT. But for the longest time, that was the weakest matchup for Beyond, was the TVT. And sometimes Beyond's TVZ can fluctuate as well. But the TVP has always been pretty solid. Um, Beyond has always had a really good grasp uh, of timings and how much he can make happen with, the, with what limited units he may have available to him, which is always a really, really great skill to have. And... But like with any other matchup, Beyond has sometimes fallen into the mistakes where he will stay on 
a low tier army or stay on a very aggressive strategy for a little bit too long. And then when that happens, of course, it gets a little bit muddy. And that's when you start to see him. I think, I'm trying to remember what Beyond's been waiting for. It's like a player like Trap who would play very tech heavy, defensive, and Beyond and trying to attack into that. Um, or like a stats. But I think Beyond has improved a lot in terms of the variability of his gameplay. Um, Beyond has shown that he is able to play late game Terran. Um, he's shown here and there some really amazing games of it. And so it's always interesting to see when he's going to pull out the willingness to go into, oh, Ghost Liberator and these late game compositions. We do have Hero here going for a, it's just some light blink stalker pressure, uh, aggression. He's gonna try and set the combat shield and actually might just be able to get it. Of course, it's not a thing like getting the stim. Ooh. Does manage to deny the combat shields. Obviously, you would want that to be the stim, but Beyond did a good job of researching stim on the back tech lab. As stalkers are going to continue to press, but they will just be pushed back eventually. We saw a double drop loaded up for Beyond, but Hero already has plenty of vision. Is setting up, I mean, his fourth base pylons already has his third expansion down. Now, Beyond's army is very, very big. Also, is sitting at 52 workers already. Is ooh, great scan here to keep these lock on. Should be able to snipe the second stalker as well. This two-prong pressure is going to come through. Nice snipes onto the Cyclones. But the double drop has made its way into the natural base uh, without any trouble. And now you're having a recall come through. And Beyond is just looking to try and stomp through this first game. There still are a lot of charge lots here at the third. But still, all the Stalkers almost getting cleaned up in the natural. And Hero is very far down in supply as this drop is heading straight towards the main. Beyond on two fronts here trying to win. Finally, the Zell Warping is going to come through. That should be able to clean up. The rest of this drop, the medevac will make its way out with the full, um, with all of the other marines. As ooh, would have mind shots at the front gonna clear up a lot of the zealots. Eight probes going down so far, and beyond just continuing this pressure. Now, I mean, hero at the front has to be careful. He doesn't quite have enough units warping in stalkers. Marines are getting low. And it's just gonna be the marauders left, but marauders versus these armored units is absolutely a fight that you want to take. The blink back is gonna have to come through. And Beyond, of course, has to be aggressive here. This is a three racks timing that he was preparing for. And behind this, his third base is quite late in comparison to what you'd want it to be if you're going for a regular macro build. Of course, you still have that high worker count here for Beyond. So in the case that he does, when he does eventually get up his additional third base, he will be able to saturate immediately, but he's got to be careful here. You can't go too aggressive. The charge lots are just going to try and dive on top of this army. Concussive Shell, I believe, yeah, it is already done. I think Beyond was trying to send out a scouting medevac there. Or at least trying to send out a fake one, but just gets caught immediately. Bunker going up. Workers have not yet been transferred be uh, for Beyond. You mind you, he has 64 workers right now. But just look at this army for Hero, as the Voodoo Line shots are actually massive. And now I think Beyond can actually take this fight straight up. As a lot of these zealots are extremely no low, the bunker is going to get loaded up. Ten SCVs have gone down, but Beyond is clearing out the army of Hero. And the Widowmine shots did so much to weaken the zealots, get rid of the shields. And sure, the third base is eventually going to be, uh, or have to be lifted off here. But Beyond can, replace, can replant it down once he has a large enough army to push back these stalkers. And of course, again, it's sitting only two workers behind that of his Protoss opponent. Another good Widow Mine shot there onto the Zealots. Dropping the main is actually going to get shut down as well. But look at this massive warping. Hero is trying to pincer Beyond's army. Zealots in the main. Zealots coming in from the natural. And let's see if this is going to work out for Hero. Just trying to find the killing blow and eliminate most of the army he gets 15 scvs alongside it in the main base with those charge lots but i don't think he's gonna be able to finish off beyond as this is such a scrappy first game but beyond is gonna stay alive the third command center can be replanted and I remind you beyond was sitting at an incredibly high worker count so he actually hasn't lost altogether that much mining But 
with Hero adding on the fourth, you need this third base to be landed soon as the Terran. And Beyond's army has increased to, to a, a sizable number. The charge lots, I mean, Hero was going for this massive gateway swell. I think he's currently sitting at something like, yeah, nine warp gates. And it was nine warp gates. There was, I mean, there was the Robox facility, but that was not being used to produce any other units. It was just mass charge a lot on three base trying to kill Beyond, and he managed to hold on. And now Hero's going to plan B. Robotics Bay now on the way to add on the splash damage on the fourth base as well. Beyond still has to be careful, though. This army is sharking around. It's still very, very powerful for the Protoss. But you got the 1-1 done for the bio as well. So you can't underestimate how much of a difference that will make in these fights. Ghosts are also on the map. The Ghost Academy has been finished. And so the EMPs are going to bolster this bio even more. That means the hero has to be very, very careful with how he takes these fights, as those force fields are going to be good. Beyond where's the evacuation? He's not going to get the units out. And a nice snipe onto the medevac. EMPs are going to go down and weaken up a lot of those stalkers, though. But a big misstep there from Beyond. This is a lot of the army that he had standing. As now disruptors are going to be added on this field. Oh! Charizard's trying to make their way on in. The force fields again are good, though. And it means that you section off most of the Terran army. And so... Ooh, the Widowmine shots, though! Trying to even out this damage here for Beyond. Trying to take this fight. The choke point now working against Hero, but it does a nice job of dragging that Widowmine shot. The bio still very, very healthy as there's plenty of medevacs to heal it up. As Beyond is just spending money right now on his ground units, on more Widowmines. Trying to chase this down even, but it has to be so, so careful. Major snipe off the first disruptor. There's a second one coming in to help out, but most of the Zealots, I mean, some of the Zealots have been trimmed. There's still so many left as Hero is just constant pressure in this game. Nine gates still just pumping out units. 64 workers, that fourth base has been saturated. No more Widowmines here to weaken up these Zealots. No more ghosts to get rid of the shields as once again, the third base is gonna be under fire. Disruptor shot gets sniped by Beyond as he just stems forward without fear. And now he's gonna try and chase down the Protoss army. As that would have mind shot not dragged properly and a lot of the Zelts get weakened up once again. And this is an insane game. Two players who play almost, I mean, a very similar style of just mass tier one units battling it out. It is only micro here that is being played out. But Beyond is held off. Beyond has survived. And that means that he has his third base up and operational now. EMP is going to go down and weaken up a lot of the shields onto the Stalkers. But you still have the Immortals and the Disruptors that are perfectly healthy. Beyond has to be careful. He can't continue to push this position. But this fourth base for Hero is really where the difference is going to be. Some Marauders on the way. Vikings being added on as well. The War Prism is actually going to get shut down very nicely. Beyond already had units in position for it. But now at the front, is he going to be able to hold on? Stams forward. Snipes all of the disruptors. Gets them all. He's now going to be able to get rid of the Immortal as well as Beyond. He's magically is able to micro himself out of that situation. His income is catching up to that of heroes trying to do this double pronged harass. But... Beyond is managing to shut it down at every single corner, but the front is now severely weakened. Beyond trying to stim on top of that disruptor is going to be able to get it as there are now ghosts. SCVs are fighting, and the worker count is now dropping to a point where you don't want to let it get to as Beyond. Snipes are going to go down onto the Zealots. Another warp into the natural, and now that the worker damage is coming through, Beyond is starting to feel the pain here of this constant aggression. 21 SCVs have fallen, and that might just be enough to put... Hero significantly in the lead, even with the army counts being so close. No longer is Beyond's income going to be able to keep up with that of Heroes. As the War Prison was finally sniped. This Hero is playing like a, he's playing like a Zerg in this game. Constant aggression, constant pressure, multi-pronged attacks, drops. I mean, actually, I mean, Hero's even playing this very similar to. A Terran with how he's been moving this 
Or Hero has. Disruptor shots are going to go out. And this game is just going to get harder and harder. Beyond, what are you doing? He's stimming on in. He thought he could get all of the Disruptors. But there were just too many that had been rebuilt. And I think that might just be the nail in the coffin. Unless Beyond has more than this available to him. He's going to pull away the SCVs. He's going to try and get rid of the Stalkers. The Vikings are landing to fight this. The Zealots are gone. The Marauders are just fighting. But the supplies are so low for Beyond. And mind you, Hero is still at 64 workers. He's still at four bases. More Warpens coming on through. It was a valiant effort by Beyond to clean up this attack, to clean up this pressure. There's just not enough. Finally, jump shots are going to go off. You just don't have enough bio anymore to one-shot them. GG, Hero takes game one. And that was one heck of a first game to start off this best of five. And if that is any indicator of what this series is going to look like, I am so, so happy that this is what we have for our series. You know, um, for those watching on YouTube, welcome to the AlphaX channel. I'm Titan on Fire, and I am... I'm back. I'm back. It's nice. It's great. I already cast two series before this. I was like, oh, man. Am I going to have enough energy for Beyond vs. Hero? This best of five? Yes. Yes, I will. If the games are like that, I absolutely will. My throat might be getting a little bit... Ooh. <laughs> A little bit messed up, but that is a-okay. But now we're on to Blackburn, and one thing that I had wanted to talk about, or had want, yeah, had wanted to talk about in the previous game um, was, of course, the fact that we were on Berlingrad. And this is a map that a lot of Protosses end up vetoing alongside Curious Minds, because those are the two maps that feel like they are the strongest for Terran. Now, of course, when you're also thinking in a best of five, you have to veto, at least in terms of preference, you will potentially look at vetoing Glittering Ashes um, or Pride of Altaris if you're the Terran. Um, so you really have to choose sometimes between Berlingrad and Curious Minds. And of course, DPG um, or Hero does end up beating Curious Minds. Takes that, beyond, I think, beyond picked actually Berlingrad first, I'd imagine. And then Hero is able to get the win on that map, which a lot of I think a lot of players look at as being Terran favored. And of course, I think one of the main reasons for that is just because of the base layout it makes it really easy for Terran to split the map, double prong pressure. You have tank positions in the late game at the thirds that are very hard to break, and so it becomes very hard for the Protoss to end up dealing with the mid game Terran. But Hero just never let, let Beyond get there. It was the three base eight gate pressure just charge lots and blink stalkers constant pressure eventually hero took a fourth but at that point he had, he had managed to get enough damage that he was starting his transition and beyond had to take enough time to rebuild that hero got his disruptors was able to then start to use those to push back the beyond it was just a very very well played game by hero and actually this sniped there on the scv at the start of this game we had the Bunker Chiefs coming in here from beyond and trying to lay mining here on the natural, but with the SCV going down, of course, you can't really afford to do that. Even lose the second Reaper on the fake proxy barracks is really not the start that you want to this game as beyond. And he is going to be going for this Widowmine play. Um, it should be just the triple Widowmine drop. I, I imagine that's what it's going to be. Usually you don't see players really... Um, skip out that third widow mine unless they're planning to get an early tech lab and there we go so beyond is going to be going for the earlier uh, cyclone as a follow-up instead of adding on the third uh, the third widow mine which is kind of the standard Terran opening um, you go 111 barracks factory starport uh, you have the reactor of course on your barracks and then you just continue to um, build widow mines until you have three do your swap over um, but Beyond here, I think, is wanting to get out a faster Raven, so he builds that tech lab in place of the third Widow Mine. So he immediately has that swap over, gets his Raven out very, very quickly. And this means that usually your Raven will be out um, just a little bit later than a Dark Templar all in would hit on two bases, but in enough time that you will have a Raven if that kind of a cheese comes across the map, or if it's really fast playing like Stalkers. Of course, that's not really the case in this game, as Widow Mines are going to make their way here on into the main. 
single probe is going to be sacrificed. That's beyond. Just going to pock away this. I, be I don't believe, actually, that. Yeah. Is there? Oh, there's enough dead space. Okay. I was going to say. The way that Bion had it was in range of the attacks. But double forge going down here for Hero. On top of a robotics bay with this blink. I mean, it's currently working with just a single gateway. So this is not even a massive commit to a blink stalker attack, which is a really interesting way of playing this out for Hero. He's going a really fast robotics bay. One gate and two forges, which is not what you see very often. And mind you, this is also without a third base. And Bian has been trying to to keep uh, track of that here with his Reaper. Was looking for any sort of a probe moving out. And so Bian has to think that something's up. And I mean, there is. It's going to be a two base Colossus here from Hero. And the reason is, I think he's preparing for potentially a move out from Bian, who does have two tanks. Is working on Stim and plus one. I don't believe combat shields has been done, so it's not going to be anything like a combat shield tank push. But I think Hero is actually reading this extremely correctly. Is he didn't add on his additional gateways? He said, "Listen, I actually want a Colossus." I'm, I'm actually, I do not know if I'm reading too far into this right now, or the, and if this was just Hero going for the early two base Colossus. But oh no, Hero! What is happening? Just lose three stalkers like that. And I guess Hero was not expecting this build. This was just him going for two base Colossus. I'm so confused by what is happening on Blackburn right now. As I think Bion was expecting a third base to be here. He's just going to set up a two base contain though. This was a three racks. The stim was late though. And again, I'm still trying to wrap my head exactly around how these builds are interacting. As we finally have a few more Blink Stalkers added on, and I suppose this is nice because Hero can finally break out and he can actually get rid of those tanks with the Blink Stalkers. And yeah. I would really love to know if that was, if Hero had seen something. I actually want to check the vision here of Hero. It's not like he saw anything in particular either. This was just the build that Hero chose for this game. And it, it ends up working decently well because Beyond's going for that kind of early tank push without stim but the issue is also you're delaying your third so much and Bion was not doing anything like a two base all in such a weird interaction in this game but I suppose it was just the tanks that tipped off hero potentially again I, I have no idea from what we saw if this build was in any way a reaction or if it was planned or this was just the original plan for hero but all in all I, I would have to say that I think Bion's probably pretty happy with his position even though the contain gets dealt with you are just really you're not gonna have any trouble getting up your third base here the one again the one upside here for hero is you get out these double upgrades and so you're gonna have plus two plus two very very quickly here for this buy or for this protoss army and so that is why I think this was just Hero wanting to do this build on Blackburn because it will probably have a little bit of better chance of defending early um, bio aggression with the faster Colossus. As, ooh. Um, and you also get out these really quick double upgrades, which can lend itself to a very, very strong mid game for the Protoss, which is what Hero loves to do. He loves these three to four base, high gateway count, super aggressive mid game Protoss uh, plays. And this build lends itself to it. If you're able to, to, if this, you know, if you don't die to anything early, this build is great for that. As we are going to see Bion once again set up for a push. Now, ideally here, Hero does stop this before it gets sieged up on the high ground. Because once the tanks on Blackburn get sieged up, this game becomes a lot harder for the Protoss um, in terms of breaking out. Especially without charge. And so we are going to see Hero start to push up. But this is going to be his first inkling that an army is even here. And Bion should have his tanks ready to siege. Raven is also here with, inter with an interference matrix. Oh, the disruptor gets denied. And I gotta say, Bion is just playing a really straight up build here. And with this tank push, it is going to work extremely well against the units that Hero has assembled as all oh, the Raven doesn't get sniped. That is massive. As Bion right now is up 30 supply, interference matrix is onto the Colossus. 
And I think Pyun has realized that he just has a massive advantage here in this game. He's going to try and push it down the tanks, getting so much value. The charge lots, they don't have charge yet. They're just zealots on the ground as the Colossus are finally on Matrix. They are going to be able to retreat back to the shield battery. One of them is just barely not going to go down. As Pyun retreats to his tank, or his tank, not tanks, only one left here on the high ground. But it still has this position to take advantage of. As Hero is trying to push this down. Vikings have now been added on. Stalkers blink forward. Disruptor is going to go down. Losses are going to survive. Bion just needs to pick up and get on out. There's more and more units being added on here. For beyond the supplies have started to even out for these players. And Zero is gonna try and go forward here with the Colossus, but the tank is gonna zone it away. Missile turrets will be added on, of course. The missile turrets are very, very useful for stopping the Colossus from just pushing on top of the Terran's bases because they can shoot them down as one Colossus gets solo with just a volley of Marauder shots. Right now, Beyond's sitting at 16 Marauders. He has almost more Marauders than Marines in his army. So we're going to see more Zealots added on for Hero. Again, this is a 2-2 Protoss army. It is very strong, and I think that's one of the main reasons why Hero was able to hold on against that tank push, is the Stalkers did not die as quickly as they otherwise would have. As Beyond is setting up the Sim City, there's a Supply Depot being added on to, to collect the Zealot aggro. Viking's going to be able to shut down the drop as well. Beyond is playing so well to the style that Hero is bringing. He's playing so reactively, knowing exactly where he needs to position units for these kind of openings that Hero is trying to exploit. But this is the point of the game where I think Hero wanted to get to. He has the 2-2. He has, right now, eight gateways once again amassed. And he's going to look for this massive attack on three bases with the fourth coming down. EMPs have not been used just yet. Because I think Beyond knows the enemy. He needs to save them. For the chunk of this army, force fields are going to go down. A lot of the bio is getting trapped behind where, they can't, where the tanks can't support them. But still the bio is going to be able to fight so, so well. As Disruption Nova goes out, the splits are good. Yeah, I'm going to continue to try and fight this, but it's so dangerous to fight without the support of the tanks. I think Vian realizes that. His medevacs are all very, very low on energy as he's trying to stutter step it back. And as Vian here, I don't even know if you need to really take this fight entirely. You can just sit back and let Hero run and attack into you as the tanks are sieged up the blink board is going to come through but look at the same city that beyond already has that disruptor shot they just snipe off two marauders but the colossus are gone and again it felt like this was the attack that hero wanted this was this is what his build was doing it was getting out these super early upgrades it was going to allow him to survive an early attack and then immediately go into this super strong three base attack and Bion has held it. Bion has his gold base up and running. Bion started on his plus three attack. Does not have plus three armor on the way just yet. And I I have to imagine that's got to be on the docket soon. Because Hero does have his 3-3 underway. With Archons being added on. Two more Colossus at a time being pumped out of these robotics facilities. Zilla drop. To find a little bit of value. Only grabs a single SCV for now. He's going to be able to get a second as Beyond. Ooh, does need to go in the natural here to deal with the second part of this harass. Snipe will go down. Zelts are going to get picked up. Only six SCVs end up falling overall. Hero's just trying to distract, though, because his whole army, or the rest of his army, is moving up towards this fourth base. But at the same time, look at Beyond. Sneaking these units towards the fifth base location of Hero, and he's actually might be able to just cancel the Nexus. He's gonna instead go for the mineral line. Great EMP. He's gonna be able to knock down a lot of those probes immediately. Let's just get the five. He's gonna now try and drop on in, and he's out positioning the army right now of Hero. He's also gonna be able to scout out this fifth base, which is warping in, and it should just be a cancel here onto the Protoss base as long as Beyond can focus fire, but the army is too close. Beyond's just gonna back up, lose one medevac full of units. Not gonna lose the second. A little bit greedy there by Beyond. I would have liked it had he just kind of hooked around the fifth base location and left a few units to harass that mineral line. Could have potentially gotten the cancel and some worker kills. But of course, he didn't know that that base was building. But the 3-3, going to be done now for Hero fairly shortly. 
And we're gonna, once again, be looking at a Protoss with an upgrade lead, which is never a situation that you, that the Terran wants to see. I think right now we already have two Colossus out. The third is being added on to replenish the splash damage here for Hero with Disruptors as well. And that two upgrade lead now up and operational for Hero. Two Liberators on the way. Beyond is finally going, starting to transition here into this really turtly Terran composition. It is Ghost Viking Tank Liberator with a whole bunch of Marine Marauders to support a great scan here is going to scout out the Protoss army. Beyond just being very aware of how Hero wants to move. But this is a maxed out Protoss army. A good EMP there. He's going to hit a lot of the Zelts. More EMP is going to go down. And all of those Archons are low on shields. As Disruptor shots are going to go out. They're going to be able to snipe the tank. Beyond has to be careful that Disruption Nova. Get so much of the bio. Gen wasn't able to snipe the disruptor in time as these liberators are getting set up, but the tanks have been eliminated. And without the tanks, this position is a lot harder to hold. EMP not gonna be able to get a lot of the army. Another EMP is need to, gonna need to go down. Does Beyond have the energy for it? As this tank is wreaking havoc on the high ground for Hero. As ooh, Colossus is gonna get sniped. That drop tried to make its way back into the fifth base, but Hero already had units there to deal with it. Only two probes end up going down. The hero is going to be so hard to push this location again. EMP, I believe another one is available. It's going to go down onto a chunk of this army. The tank has fallen. Beyond is trying to hold, but it looks like Hero might just be able to crush through. All of this Protoss army is so low, though. As the reinforcements are coming in, the Colossus is so low. The Stalkers and the Disruptors all barely in the orange. But it just feels like it's too much. Heroes managed to push down this position. GG, Hero's going to go up 2-0. And these last two games, I mean, they could have gone either way. But Hero really showing, I mean, two very, very different builds. They both have kind of the same end goal behind them. With that eight gate pressure on three bases while you're taking your fourth. And it's really been impressive to see how Hero has been managing these games. But Beyond, I mean, he's been keeping up. It's not like Beyond has been just getting rolled over by Hero. Beyond has been showing some great micro. Has been really pushing Hero to the limit. But Hero comes out on top. And I mean, Hero just showing why he is so good. So, so good. Switches up the build order in from game one to game two. I mean, I was really... I was so confused by the build order there from Hero because it felt like a build order that was completely a reaction to what your the Terran is doing. Where you say, oh, well, oh, this, look at this. He's getting ready for an attack. But no, that was just Hero's build. It was the two gate to the two base Colossus um, off the one gate blink stalker. Because there was really nothing that Hero had seen in the main. He had seen maybe the tanks at the front. And then you'd expect blink stalkers. Um, and it was definitely sketchy for a second but beyond was trying to set up the contain i think instead of pressing the issue and being more aggressive was what gave hero the time to just push out and then eventually find his footing on three bases and now with up with an upgrade lead he could kind of have control of the map how he wanted and take trades how he wanted but yeah i was <laughs> i was stumped i was trying to read i was trying to read into it i was like i have no idea what is going on in the mind of hero but it is it's working it's working, and that's that's all I need to know. <laughs> that is all that I need to know. <sighs> so we're gonna see this first adept go down. Very nicely micro there from Beyond is gonna be able to keep. All the Hellions alive, just gonna repair them up so that he can press in with them later to try and find some damage. It is the Phoenix from Hero, though, in this game. And Phoenix builds, of course, uh, still very, very popular in PvT. I don't think they've really ever gone out of style or out of fashion. They've just always been very, very good. And so a Hero is definitely extremely adept. Uh, <laughs> At handling them. And what? Look at. What? what? Look at him! He's so good! But I actually don't know if it's gonna help though, because he didn't lift up the second Hellion. They are gonna get off two shots here. Four probes are gonna go down, but mind you, you've already sniped off three of these Hellions. 
six probes do end up going down, but that's just, it's such a cheeky move. Because obviously if Hero has Heli, has, has his units stationed in the natural and is trying to defend both the natural and the main base, if there's a drop coming at the same time, then Hero's kind of completely screwed. He won't be able to defend both places with the Phoenix and the Adepts. So instead pulls all the probes away, makes sure that he can just deal with the Hellions. And then that kind of also makes sure that um, there's also not a drop coming in um, synchronously. Synch what is the what is the word? In synchrony with with that Hellion run by. Still seven probes going down. I think it's a little bit more damage than Hero did want to take. But now trying to find his way on in here with the Adepts to find some return damage of his own. Oh, Medivac's going to just have to drop out. But all of these Widow Mines are going to go down. Very nice catch there by Hero. This engineering bay is coming down, and Bion is going to be preparing eventually here for three racks. But actually, the Phoenix just diving on in. Not quite enough Marines to really threaten this, but a nice pick off on one of the Phoenix. The Cyclone will eventually fall. But Hero is going to be very, very happy with that trade. Adept just finds his way back on in. He's going to pick off a few more of those low health SCVs from earlier. Another Cyclone is going to get picked off. Hero is just being so annoying with these Phoenix. And these trades have been horrendous for Beyond. It's plus one stim pack on the way. It's gonna be that seven minute timing from Beyond once again. He's trying to replace the Cyclones. Obviously, tanks into Phoenix are also just not good. The Cyclone at least gives you the chance to micro your unit back and to get some value. Gonna get picked up more worker damage coming through. Six more are going to fall, and Hero is just doing so much work in this game. As only 11 SCVs have fallen, but it's been enough to give Hero a 17 supply lead. Bion is really going to need something to drag him out or get him a... He's going to really need something to even drag himself even in this game because right now, this opening, I think, has gone completely the way of Hero. Sure, he lost those seven workers early on, but he's managed to trade back that damage. Hero has been able to shut down the follow-up. The four Widowmine drop was completely negated. And so now, Bion is really going to be banking everything on this timing. He has Stim. Plus one is on the way, so it will be done by the time that Bion is across the map. But it's still so, so risky for Bion right now. This game has not been going his way. It really has not. Of course, the supplies are even, but just looking how these trades have been going. Any Terran would want this to look a lot different. Charge is almost done. It will be finished by the time that Bion is across the map with his units right now. He is setting up an army supply, though. 36 to 54. If Bion can start to find trades against the army, if he can start to you know, peel away and pick off some of the Protoss units, there might be a shot for him here in this game. But he's just going to pull back, and I don't... The indecisiveness is really going to hurt Bion here. Oh, the SCVs are coming. Oh, Bion is pulling the boys. He knows that he needs some a miracle. And against a high gateway count with Phoenix, what does it, what, what, do you, what do you think will give you a miracle? That's right, it's the boys. As here we go. Hero has no idea that this is coming until right now. He of course knew that the seven minute timing attack was possible. Did he know that the SCVs were gonna be here as well? As feedbacks are going down onto the medevacs, that's a lot of energy off two of them. But is that going to matter? There's only one Archon here. Widow Mines are going to burrow, and the SCVs can do such a good job of tanking. You're going to see a lot of damage go down onto the SCV count of Beyond. But mind you, none of his army has fallen so far, and he's trading out Zealots here for SCVs, as now the Phoenix are just fighting against the Marines alone. Beyond is trying to stim on in. The Archon is down. He's getting out of range of the shield battery overcharge. 
gonna continue to try and stim on in here and snipe off as much as he can. The shield battery is gonna go down. Only one medevac remaining. The probes are gonna have to be pulled beyond more stutter step micros. More marines are coming on in. Another widow mine is gonna burrow, and beyond is finding the damage. The worker count still heavily in favor here of Hero, but beyond he's trying to make it work. And the probes are gonna go down as this is the damage that Beyond needed. This is the miracle that Beyond needed, even if he doesn't end the game here. He has found enough damage to get himself back even and equal. Beyond. absolute madman he does it again and again and again and this was a game that it felt like hero solidly had in his grasp hmm. sorry about that going to pick, get picked up here on the reinforcements. More SCB is going to be brought over. Beyond, he's just going to go again. <laughs> Apologies, I had to take a drink of water in the middle of that there. That's why I was silent, but this is absolutely insane. Hero already has his concave set up. He has not been producing any more workers. He's stayed at 40. And Beyond, he says take two. There are more Archons here, though. The Medivacs, they have been replenished, but those are some good force fields. The Evac comes through, and the Medivac does stay alive. But all of the SCVs are going to fall. So now it was just these Marines, and against these Marines, those Archons reign supreme. Once again, Hero trying to find his way on in. The Archons are going to go down, though. Beyond, he's just stimming on in. Beyond sniped the Archons. Beyond thinks he has the killing blow. All of the Marines are red, but the Archon goes down. Another one is here. The, the juggling is impeccable, but it's not enough for Hero to try and keep everything alive. And once again, Beyond somehow, just by the slimmest margin, is making this work. He's just going to pick up, get on out. He knows that he needs to re reinforce and regroup. And how is Beyond making this work? How is Beyond turning this game around? He almost gets the Immortal. As Hero is just barely holding on. But mind you, most of the supply lead right now for Hero is in that worker count. The army supply is actually heavily in favor of Beyond. Who's going to be able to start to snipe off these units that are warping in. Beyond with just plus one plus one. With some Marines and a Dream, snipes the Warp Prism! And a recall has to be forced. Beyond, with a small group of units, is trying to win this game with the double SCV pull. Beyond is going absolutely crazy. Feedback's gonna go down. More Archon's gonna be morphed. Of course, the money is not there for Hero to get Storm. But the Archons are still very, very powerful, too. In that last fight, they almost single-handedly won it. The fight, but... Beyond just barely holding on. Barely managing to snipe them. And now, Beyond has reinforced 53 army supply to 29. This is the final push. If Hero cannot hold on here, then this might just be game. Beyond doing very good with the stutter step. Tries to snipe down one Archon, but a good juggle here from Hero. It is micro versus micro right now. And these are two of the best players when it comes to the micro battles. As Widow Mines are being added back on, snipe onto the Observer. Another Archon being morphed in. The immediate load up Beyond. He's going to try and hit some double prong pressure here, potentially. As that Warp Prism is getting dangerously far out. More Zealots have been morphed in. 
And mind you, again, this is... Oh, you have to be careful. Beyond is just going to retreat that. And Medivac is so low. But he's got a double drop into the main. And this could be, again, the killing blow here for Beyond. Will he be able to find enough damage? He's going to be able to get rid of all of the Zealots that were warped in. The High Templar are going to go down before they can morph. So a recall can't be popped on that third Nexus to get that Archon to safety. But Hero is going across the map. This choke point, though. The Archon's being juggled into it. The Warp Prism is sniped! Beyond gets the War Prism with a full Archon inside of it. The other Archon is going to go down. Beyond holds, and he still has units across the map. As GG, Beyond wins game three. As we are going to have Cybernex Core placed down. Nexus as well. Hero, standard opening here on Glittering Ashes. Now, of course, this is a big map. Glittering Ashes, nine bases per side of the map. There is always the potential that you get an extremely long game on Glittering Ashes. And I'm not going to say that I would love to see a late game TVP between Hero and Beyond. But I would love to see a late game TVP between Hero and Beyond. Yes, I would. Of course I would. Now, how do I think that would play out? I have no idea, because of course these are two players that embrace the mid game. Full, full heartedly, that is where their strengths are. But Hero can play late, and that's something that we know beyond. I don't really know how his late game TVP would look. Um, we did see him get into Liberators a little bit towards the end of the Blackburn game, but again, that was right as he was uh, Hero found the killing blow. So we really didn't get a sense of what Beyond's late game will entirely look like. As we're going to be having the one more run here from Beyond, it's going to be the Triple Widowmine drop into the uh, Stargate opening here from Hero. Of course, the Adept Shade was able to stop that Reaper from scouting out the fact this is Stargate, but on Glittering Ashes, I think you can kind of expect it to be a Stargate opening. Just because it's Glittering Ashes. It's going to be a Stargate opening on Glittering Ashes. That's just kind of how it goes. This, this map um, has a lot of dead airspace, so it's really easy to use the Phoenix. Um, I mean, this is the map where Hero originally did his double Stargate Phoenix into ground pound Protoss um, against Zerg. Obviously, is very comfortable with the unit. I mean, we saw in that last game, it got him an incredible lead early on. Unfortunately, of course, he was unable to really snowball it um, as Beyond did shut it down. Ooh, I like this, Beyond. Evacking his Marines directly on top of the Adepts. I don't believe that this one Adept is going to be able to get away. The boost will be available very shortly. And that's going to be a very, very dead Adept. Beyond going for a very similar uh, build here in game number four as he did in game two on Blackburn. That faster Raven has been built. It was just the, the two Widow Mines that were produced. Beyond. Yeah, you can actually just fight this straight up with the Marines. I don't think this is necessarily the engagement that Hero wants to take. Does snipe up a few Marines, though. And just loses a bit of health there on a Phoenix, but it's actually just gonna lose the Phoenix straight up And that is a little bit sloppy here in the early game the Phoenix count again the, the Phoenix if you lose them early on It is a big investment um, these these units cost 150 minerals 100 gas. They build extremely quickly And so if you lose one that is kind of an immediate dip in your bank that you're gonna have to spend to remake that Phoenix Because ideally you want to be sitting around five to seven Phoenix in the early game to help defend everything. So we are gonna be seeing Hero get up to five. He's gonna stop there as he adds on the forge to the Twilight Council. And Beyond is gonna kind of be preparing um, for, again, this barracks, double barracks, cyclones are being produced. It's not gonna be the tank push that he did um, in game two, where he actually just produced straight tanks instead of the cyclones to go for that earlier attack. But it will be a lot safer of an opening with this Raven, of course, available. The harassment options have been a little bit less for Beyond. He didn't actually go for the Widowmine drop at all in this game. At least, yeah, the Cyclones, when they have things to help protect them, are very, very good at shoving back those Phoenix. Ooh, 
Ooh, Phoenix potentially gets a, oh, doesn't quite go down. But does get very, very low with Stim and plus one now on the way for Beyond. Of course, those will be finished up around seven minutes and 45 seconds for the Terran player. And that would be a very, very strong timing. The Comet Shields as well start up a little bit later. So it will all be coming together for Beyond right around that eight minute mark for a push as, ooh, Widowmine. It's quite a lot of value. It knocks a lot of these Phoenix down low, so they're only able to stay for the two SCV kills before they have to get on out of dodge. He's just sharking around outside as natural, of course. He's going to be waiting for these upgrades to complete. And I think actually the timing will be closer to um, just the straight up, yeah, 7 minute mark instead of 7.45. <clears throat> but plus one is going to finish for hero by the time that this attack actually comes across the map. Immediately starts up the plus two ground armor for his charge loss. He's adding on more Phoenix as well. And this is one that I've noticed that hero does sometimes where he will stop his Phoenix production at five and then add on more later in the game when he feels that it is potentially necessary of course in this position i think it is just for that defense it is for heroes saying listen i don't really have a solid charge lock count that i can get out right now so i'll just add on more phoenix they'll, they'll be able to slow down the terran for me to build up by my zealot numbers and right now it's actually sitting around 10 i think yeah we'll be at 10 phoenix by the time this last one um, is produced going up fast that to 11 it's a really hefty Phoenix count as one once again is going to get extremely low from that Cyclone. Hero is going to start to set up a Zealot run by here. And this is how Hero starts to spring the trap of his style onto his opponents. Phoenix are going to dive on into the main at the same time. He's going to consolidate actually his forces at that proxied gateway while he's taking his fourth. And while he knows that Beyond is distracted, here we go. Hero is going to try and go on in. That Widowmine does get quite a lot of damage. There are actually so many Widowmines here, though. His anti-armor missile is going to weaken up a lot of the Zealots. They're just going to have to try and run away. Beyond is actually working with a smaller army here than Hero, but arguably a much better army at fighting. The army for Hero, it's 29 Zealots and 12 Phoenix in a straight-up fight. These are not used to do well, and those Widowmine shots were actually massive! As the anti-armor missile is still active as Hero tries to dive on in here. The Marauders are trying to tank up as much as they can, but the Zealots, there are just so many of them. An amazing force field from Hero. He's going to be able to get a lot of value with the unload. The pickup and the unload is going to come through. And the Zealots, again, without any attack upgrades, without any other DPS behind it, they don't fight as well straight up. The Marines with the plus one, with the Medivacs healing them, they have much more longevity in these fights. And because you don't have Colossus, because you don't have Disruptors or any sort of splash damage, there's nothing to bolster the actual effect of these Zealots. And once the Terran gets to enough army, they really no longer have the efficiency that you would expect from them. And you see that in just how many resources here are lost in that fight. And he kind of reset Hero into a losing position. Diving in there with just Zealots and Phoenix it was not the right play. Nice pick off on the Ghost Spear. Still looking at it beyond that is extending his lead to 30 supply ahead. Splink is on the way, plus one, and Immortals. Robotox Bay is on the way, but is very, very slow. I would, again, it would, I feel like it really should be much quicker as a great EMP is to snipe off all but the last one of these Phoenix. 15 in total have gone down, two remain. Never mind. There's two Phoenix left, but that double drop is going to try and find its way on into the base. The Zealots are here. You have 1 1 done for the bio, but it's plus two armor for those Zealots, so they don't really die that quickly. That Widowmine shot is massive in weakening up a lot of these Zealots. The whole position will mean the hero is going to get a few SCV kills. Seven going down. I think it's actually better than you could have hoped for. The medevac will fall, but Beyond is now just going to go for the power push. And again, what is there to help? hero's army it is zealots it is immortals it's phoenix again 
you know, in the last game, the main reason why Hero really wasn't able to finish off that game, the Archons had the splash, but you're just working with charge lots. And when it's just charge lots, you do not fight the Terran that well straight up. Even against Marines, they have the micro ability. With Ghost now as well, you can snipe away these Zealots one by one. It's a massive Zealot count. And if Hero was able to find a surround with this army, maybe it'd be a different story. But the Disruptors aren't out just yet. There's no splash damage. And these Widow Mines are all burrowing. The shots are about to go off. And there are the fireworks. It's the 4th of July, baby. As the Zealots all get blown to smithereens. You have, I mean, the disruptor's out now, but the two shots have been used, and now Beyond is just gonna push on forward. He knows that shield battery is low on energy. The Widow Mine is picked up, but it's just these two Phoenix that are left, and they're gonna get sniped as Beyond is stimming to win. He's looking to tie it up. Pulls away from the disruptor, snipes off two, and says, I want a game five. I will not go quietly into the night. The third is gone, and Beyond is gonna tie us up here in the finals of the ESL Open Cup Korea 116. And it all comes down to this. One game to decide who is going to take away the victory. It was looking dire for Bion at the start. Microwing his heart out, but Hero was able to hit his timings. And Bion started to throw the wrenches in the plans. The SCV pulls in game at number three. I mean, and then in Glittering Ashes, I'm not entirely sure what the plan was for Hero. Obviously, I think that is a build that could work against a, a worse player, but against someone of the caliber of Beyond, I think it's very hard to expect that composition to find success. Just making sure I see if he didn't die. As we're gonna be looking for the proxy Stargate here for Hero. Obviously, 2000 Atmospheres is probably the best map for the Proxy Stargate. It's the safest location that is the farthest away to scout from the Terran's main base. And so, Bion really not going to think anything of it. And of course, Bion is not a player who has CV scouts. So, he's not going to notice anything is up until that Reaper get across, gets across the map. And of course, that's with the assumption that, that Reaper gets across the map and gets into the main. As Hero has hidden away his probe. So we'll be able to go back in with that to see what is going on. Proxy Stargate going down, of course, will be the Oracle. Hero, just to prepare, has placed the shield battery um, at the main base because he knows that he's not really going to have a, a super quick adept, but the Reaper is brought back regardless just to deal with the probe. Oracle is on the way. Sorry. <laughs> Again, apologies for the pause. I am drinking water in the middle of the game. I know, I know. So irresponsible, Mr. Castermans. What are you doing? But it's a very late Nexus. Bion is going to scout this, and this should tip him off to the fact that something is up, that something has been proxied. We're going to try and see what it can do. Actually, yeah, is just going to back on up here, but... Honestly, he could just try and find as much damage as possible as the Oracle is incoming. Cyclone not out quite yet. It's just going to be the four Marines for Beyond, but that should be enough to at least dissuade Hero from diving on into this mineral line. Ooh, Cyclone out. Uh-oh, Hero. Oracle is going to go down. And that is a disaster for Hero. He only gets two SCVs. Loses the Oracle. There's a second Oracle on the way, though, and that might be able to dive in and finish up some of these weakened SCVs. We'll be able to do so. Only, only two going down, my oh, hero. With the Miss Micro. Not going to be able to get, I think, as much value as he wanted as the Orbital Command has been placed down for Beyond. And for the Protoss. You are, I mean, ahead in workers, but the the bases, the natural bases, finishing at the same time is always, is never a good sign. As Beyond, he's gonna be able to get a probe here with that Reaper. Actually, it's two with the Reaper, just po pocketed away at the bottom of the natural. 
He's gonna find essentially as much damage as that first Oracle got by itself. As another Oracle, third one has been produced, but Cyclone is here. Just barely does not have the lock on range. Espeon is going to be able to depower the Stargate. Yeah, should just walk a little bit further. Blink on the way though for Hero. Tanks in production, Engineering Bay as well. On the way for Beyond, who I, it feels like is in an amazing position in this game now with being able to reduce the damage taken to six probes for three oracles being committed in. It is so far great results here for Beyond. Great defense. Has to be care. Ooh, Hero has to be so, so careful with these Cyclones. Constantly keeping ta uh, tags on those oracles whenever they try and dive on in. Stim Comet Shield plus one all started up. Starport also on the way. This was the build from Beyond. Is, ooh, he's going to get caught out a little bit, trying to stutter step down these adepts is the best value that he can get. And we'll be able to snipe both of them for the six Marines. But this was the build from Beyond that was the 1 1 Barracks Factory into two additional barracks to get those faster stim and combat shields and also delaying your starport until you actually end up needing. Um, your metamax for the timing attack and so it's a very very potent build order that gives you a really really powerful timing a, a bit quicker than you might otherwise expect if you were going for just a, a standard 1-1-1 as the tank is going to be able to shut down those stalkers trying to push on in third base is on the way for hero though that means that Beyond, when he makes his move, is going to have to try and find some damage because Hero is on the recovery. Hero is trying to get his work back into a worker lead right now. Work, Hero is trying to find himself an advantage in this game because his opening really didn't do it. As now Medivac has been produced. The Oracle's just right now constant revelation machines. The drop is getting loaded up and is going to be sent out, out of vision of that revelation as charges started up. More info here for Hero. Sees that the single tech lab is researching. That should be enough to at least give away to Hero the fact that, all right, you have Stim already. You have Comet Shields. This is Concussive Shell. If it wasn't, you'd be producing both of them. And so Hero is just going to pull back. He's going to play the safe. Three more gateways being added on. Let's be done here. Third command center, two additional racks. And this is about as stock standard as it gets from these players. Neither of them wanting to risk anything in this game at number five hero already put himself out there a little bit with this with the uh with the proxy stargate and says that's about that's about enough i'm fine with that as very nice snipe there onto the two cyclones the drop is going to find its way on into the main base and so we are going to get a recall forced out most of the marines will manage to escape at least half of them for our sacrifice there to the void and the stalkers and be able to eliminate them. Ghost Academy on the way though, and it's gonna be five ranks Ghost Academy. It's gonna be the super heavy bio style that Beyond is just so, so good with. I love this though from Hero. Double Stasis Ward, just to try and slow down Beyond when that push eventually comes across the map. It's such a nice play. Who's Widow Mines? Sniping them would have been a nice. Is that a flyby, a revelation, a scout of the Ghost Academy? And that's all that Hero is going to get for now. This game is, it really, I mean, com if you compare this to game one, the fireworks that we had there at eight minutes, it is about as passive as it gets for for both these players, where they are not going to put anything out, they're not putting anything out on the line, they're not making any risky moves. This is real game five territory right now. Finally, that, that second Oracle was sniped. Just the third remaining. Stasis Ward's going to be triggered, and actually Beyond does a good job of just allowing a few units to trigger them off as High Templar are now on the map. Storm not quite done, so of course the energy that they have is really going to be only be usable for feedbacks. And of course their ability to morph into Archons, but Beyond already has his ghosts available. He's going to try and protect his units the best he can out of the state support. He's able to keep that Marauder alive. 
as these supplies are almost dead even in this game worker counts. Three ahead for Bian. Revelation will snipe off the Widow Mines. Enhanced Shockwave is on the way as Bian. Oh. <laughs> oh, these, 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 both these players are just so handsome with their moves as feedbacks onto the ghosts. Absolutely massive, and the High Templar is actually going to survive. Scans are going to go down. Feedbacks is not going to be able to go off. Snipes here onto the High Templar. Three of them are going to fall immediately, but you still have energy on the other three as Hero is trying to posture. And now, finally, this game is going to come to a front after about 10 minutes of just building up and waiting to see what the other player will do. Hero is going to be across the map. Plus one is done for Beyond. He's working on his plus two uh, ranged or infantry weapons as well as the plus two armor or the plus one armor for them. Meanwhile, you're just going to have that plus one ground attack for Hero. Some good EMPs are going to weaken up a lot of those stalkers. Of course, the main unit that you're going to want to get the shields off of is going to be the Zealot says, Storm Drops. Yeah, should be aware. He's going to just try and snipe the, the Warp Prism. He's going to be able to get it. The Warp Prism is down. That's a lot of the High Templar, or at least two of them at least. But there are a lot more with this actual push. This High Templar count right now is extremely high. Sitting at five. There was seven before with the two that were pocketed in, in the Warp Prism. Of course, Hero didn't want to commit, I think, all of his... His High Templar in there because he knows that Beyond can just snipe that. Beyond is so good at doing so. The backs are good. The Storm, though, is a bit of a whiff, and that means that that's just a bit of energy off of one of the High Templar. Beyond. And there's a single Marine to the other one. As the fourth Command Center is being added on to eventually match the fourth Nexus here of Hero. As the second form of Splash is going to be complemented into this army by Hero. Disruptors on the way, plus one armor as well to just tank up the beefiness of this force. We saw a snipe there into a High Templar, a feedback go down. There's only, I think, three High Templar right now with energy, but you got to be so, so careful. That Widow Mine is just going to be dragged very, very well by the Zealots and Hero. He's trying to just commit on in. The Storm, though, is a whiff. And so you can't really commit in without that AoE. A massive amount of splash damage coming through, but the zoning storms to help the retreat. It's a lot of energy wasted for Hero, but it makes sure that he isn't going to get chased down and he is not going to lose too much as, ooh, that Disruptor shot actually gets quite a bit of value. EMPs go down. We're going to see the Disruptor and a few Archons fall here. And you still have more energy. All of the High Templar get EMP'd and beyond is suddenly going to be up 175 supply. He is so far ahead. And Hero, everything is falling apart. As, oh no, Hero, what do you have left? It's a Disruptor and a Dream. Beyond suddenly is on the doorstep of winning. As the Disruptor Shot's gonna go out, the Disruptor Shot finds a massive connection. But everything is falling to pieces. Another Disruptor Shot is not gonna be able to connect. These Disruptors are gonna go down. The fourth base is under fire. There's still plenty of money available here for the Protoss, but the Stalkers are gonna get stimmed down. More Warpins coming through. It's a landed Viking. Probes are falling. And it looks like Hero is gonna hold on. But the supply is the real story here. 145 to 93. How is Hero gonna hold on? He has two Disruptors, a Colossus, and a Dream right now. As Beyond found the EMP of a lifetime onto the clump of High Templars. Another massive EMP. That Enhanced Shockwave is done. Vikings just picking away at the Colossus. Widowmine going to snipe off a few more probes. The worker count 72 now to 53. This is a round coming through. Disruptor Shot's going to go out, but it's just going to get eliminated. And Hero, he is so, so far behind. As Beyond is on the doorstep here of winning this match. And Beyond just looking absolutely insane right now. As the fifth Nexus is going to be sniped. And Hero is in a world of trouble.
Leon recollecting his army. Gathering it together for one final move. Disruptors, that is what Hero has to offer right now. That is what Hero is going to attempt to win this game with. Is the Disruptors, the three of them that are available. But it just looks ever so dire beyond making sure to clean up the all the surrounding area. That there's no more bases. He really has trapped his opponent into this location. More and more disruptors are going to be added on. I mean, we are looking at five disruptors, and so it is getting to the point where Hero will have so many disruption no or purification novas to throw out that it will be hard to dodge them all. But when you just look at the straight up army supplies. As long as Beyond splits somewhat decently, he should be able to win this fight. As he's opened up the rocks, Beyond, his army is already split up. There is two angles here for the Protoss, but just look at that enhanced shockwave. The entire army getting weakened up. Beyond pulling back, does it gets the Marauders out in front. Disruption Nova is going to whip. Hero is going to try and chase this down. He feels like he has a shot. EMPs go down. All the shields are gone. Disruption Nova just miss. Hero is rebuilding, but now you have Liberators on the way for the time. Fusion Core as well, and look at this. Beyond loading up for a double drop into the main base. Hero is being tenacious, but Beyond is just trying to find all the moves he can to get even more ahead. As we're looking at the 5th Command Center finishing up, we're now going to see Gateways going down. And look at this Sim City. It is so bad for Hero. Disruption Nova goes out. You need to pick up if you're Beyond. It's just going to lose a Ghost, but two more going out. It's time a few, a bit more of the bio, but now the third base is under fire, and GG Beyond gets the reverse sweep.